Hello everyone, welcome to another unboxing. Today I'm going to be looking at the Japanese Type 1 Honi Platoon. So the Honi is a Japanese tank destroyer. It was one of the only Japanese tanks that could destroy, well actually it was the only Japanese tank fielded that could destroy a Sherman at range from the front. And so that's rather pathetic for the Japanese, but uh, these things saw action in the Philippines and I believe also in the Okinawa and Iwo Jima campaigns in the defense of the Japanese islands. But let us have a look inside and see what a Japanese tank destroyer platoon looks like. I can feel it already, the dreaded box, it calls to me. It calls to me. Oh yeah, and it's gonna be stubborn. Nope, nope, no, no it's not, Never mind. So inside, opa, it's very sticky this one. You know how resin gets with these sponges, they can get very sticky. So you get the full cast hull. I expected the gun shield to be separate, but you get a full cast hull, and you get nicely cast metal tracks. A little bit of flash on these to clean up. I believe they go in this way. Yeah. Uh, these are just built on Chiha things, just like a Marauder or a SU-152 would be. You know, they were just adapted. And then these things drive around the battlefield. They were decently fast, actually. That's the one thing they had a good advantage in. Really easy to camouflage. The Japanese used them to really good effect. Like, honestly. The Japanese were really good with what they had. What they had was pathetic, so. You got your little gun in there. That's basically what it would look like. These are really cool in Flames of War. They're, uh, well, I wouldn't say really cool, but unless you just want to rely on suicide troops, these are probably your best anti-tank option, and they're decently cheap, so I say why not. Uh, it looks like you also get the top to this, yeah. So that would just go on top just to do something. Oh, I guess just to hold the gun in place. Anyway, so these things were used in the Manila campaign, which is actually where the big sentry units, the tank units, were deployed. So these things would support the tanks, wait in ambush, or even distract the enemy so that other tanks could rush up on them. They were uh, incredibly ill-armored, as you can imagine. They, uh, they actually had slightly thicker armor in this plate than the Chiha had in its turret. This is reflected in the game. They are, anti or they are armor 3 in the front, making them the heaviest armored Japanese tank in the game. <laughs> yeah, let that sink in for a second. And their t main gun is rate of fire 2, AT-10... Very decent gun. Not nothing extraordinary, but it's the second best anti-tank gun in the entire Japanese arsenal. They're also decently cheap, even at Fearless Veteran. I believe they're only 60 points a tank, so it's really not bad, especially compared to something like a Panther or, you know, anything half-decent fielded by European armies. Anyway, that has been my Flames of War Japan review. You guys are going to have a couple more of these, so I hope you enjoy. Leave me a comment if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.